The first thing we have on the agenda is says, quote unquote, a real mock negotiation, but it really understates kind of what we're going to have participate up here in just a minute. And the reason it understates is because of the people who are actually doing the mock negotiation. So the first person, Dane, um, Dane, where are you? Somewhere in here. There he is. Um, so Dane is probably the biggest badass in this room, is my guess. Um, so um, he founded, has started, and sold 12 companies throughout his career so far. He's currently CEO of a company called Sumall, which is a venture-backed startup that does BI and um, has a super successful entrepreneurial career. So he will be playing the role of successful serial entrepreneur. And then secondarily, we have uh, almost equally as badass venture capital investor. Um, so we have Brad, who's been investing in startups since the 90s, so before this whole new tech bubble started, back in the old tech bubble. And he's co-founder and a general partner at uh, um, High Peaks, which is a $25 million early stage fund based here in New York. And so I'm going to invite both of them to come up. And they're going to do a mock negotiation with, uh, um, between each other, talking basically about early stage investing. So I'll turn it over to them. And in parallel, we've got um, term sheets. So they're going to be working off a set of documents. And those set of documents are going to be passed around now, so you guys can flip through it and see what an actual term sheet looks like. Um, can you guys hear us all right? Hello. OK. So what we want to do is just quickly go through an artificial pitch meeting and then a series of negotiations that would normally happen. It's going to be obviously very compressed, but we'll try to hit on some of the nicer points that you guys should be aware of. The idea for I my I need to end, raise my seat. I'll lower my seat. There we go. Feel better? You want to always be lower than the VC you meet with so they don't have an ego issue. Just get yourself as down as far as you can. Look humble. So damn. Oh, no. And then if we have a little time left over, we'll go into some questions afterwards. Okay? All right. So uh, let's just give it a start. Good to meet Hi, you. Dan. How are you? Welcome to High Peaks. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, I've been looking into your firm for a while, and it's amazing what you've gotten done. I called him Jim. He's in one of your best portfolio companies, and he has nothing to say but good stuff. Um, I've gone around and tried to find anyone I could who's actually been with you, and they really do have a lot of, of pedigree, and I think we're... Your business lines up with our interests. It's actually really nicely aligned. So we're just thrilled to get to meet and start this whole thing off. Awesome. Best possible way to start, by the way. Hey, Done his homework. <clears throat> yeah, always know as much as you can going in. It's definitely advantageous. So um, I just want to tell you a little story about how this thing came about. Right. So I was working at MIT as a research assistant. And I came across this really interesting component that does pheromone detection. So we created this company called ScanR. Um, it's only been around for six months. We have a bunch of really dedicated people who are working for next to nothing because they believe in this. They've turned down giant salaries to sort of join our vision. Um, and we think we're at the stage where we can actually leverage and get some market awareness if we can find some financing. What do you do? Uh, well, you know, we're early, so we're still trying to figure out the model. We have some core technology, which is some understanding pheromones, which we can apply into mobile, social. This is not a good idea, just generally, so you know it. You know, mobile, social, internet, websites. It helps you understand you know, how humans interact with each other. It, it gives you a better sense of what you're dealing with. Is there a daily deal component to this? Uh, you know, we could probably you wire that, that in somewhere, because you could actually match a deal against someone's real deep interest, where you normally don't have that kind of data. But once we get a map for somebody, we could actually do daily deals. But obviously, we have to have a very focused path and hit one milestone after another. So right now, we're just focusing on that core technology. And what's the first market application, you think? Uh, the first market application we think is uh, dating, right? Dating is a big space. So what we want to do is take this technology and link it in with mobile devices so people can actually get a sense of where they are appropriate fits and try to partner with big firms. We had a great meeting with Match. I know we're very, very small, but they actually came by our office and they really liked the idea of how this could really find a, a deeper profile and be more competitive, but it's just very early days for those guys. And tell me a little about the team. Uh, so we have three scientists. Um, and again, they're all not paid. They're all believing in this to their heart's content all from MIT, they're all very good. And we have one engineer who's sort of building the technology that maps the, the actual science behind it. And so far we have a test system, but that's about it. Have you worked with these guys before? Uh, one of them I've worked with for a few years at school, and the other two were on the research project that he was associated to. Okay. Um, and where do you think this goes? What's the, what's the exit out of this thing? Well, you know, we don't want to be overly big here, but we think this is actually a transformation of technology, right? You're bringing bioscience into technology, and you're allowing it to 
deploy and how people interact with each other. So we see a potential to actually affect everybody on the planet, and where you could actually develop profiles and talk to everybody. But obviously, we need to find a partnership that gets us there to start with. So whether it's dating or whether it's um, location-based searching or all that kind of stuff, we'll find one avenue to walk through and then get to the bigger market. Okay. So should we get ahead? Yeah, we would normally do a demo and find out that you are really, really sexy, pheromone-wise, and all that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> And then we would, I uh, imagine, break off in the sense that we might have created some interest. Uh, in between, probably the most important thing to remember is don't burn all your powder going in. So I will send you like four emails between now and the next session saying how the match deal is evolving, how we have this new application, trying to make sure that you see a lot of tapestry. Yeah, and I want to highlight the thing that I said before, too. And we're going to get to the negotiation pretty quickly. But the, the single best thing that Dane did in that warm up was come in with a real sense of purpose about why he was here and why he was talking to me and and you know that's not always going to be it doesn't even need to be 110 percent genuine it just you just need to show the the folks you're talking to that you've done some homework and you know what you're selling and why you're selling to me it's, it's astonishing frankly how often that is uh not done and people just walk in and they don't really know anything about you and what you've invested in. um and the other thing he did that I think was, was pretty good and important is he uh, started by telling the story of kind of where and how this came about and, you know, the lab he was working at and the people he was with. Uh, and again, it's amazing how often people just come in and say, hi, I'm Bob and I'm doing X. And, and oftentimes the most important thing about Bob's ability to do X is, is where he came from and what he was doing before. So Dane gets some, his, his business is a little insane, but he gets some big points for some of how we started the pitch. And it's a good thing if you didn't do your research, which you would usually do at the end of that session, is you want to interrogate them as much as possible as well. Um, you guys won't have the time in this environment here, but you'd want to find out the size of his fund, how much he has left in this fund, what his decision process is, how big he is in the totem pole of the fund, who his other partners are. Like all that stuff is extremely useful down the road to leverage. But I'll presume I did the research and have that on the side. Yeah, and the and big reason why that stuff is as important as it is too is that um, you know, I have a very limited data set off of which to make a decision about any company. And one of the things I know, you know, I've been in this business for 13 years and invested in a couple dozen companies. Um, and there's very little that's more important than the founder's ability to sell and convey a vision for what they're doing and, and persuade employees, prospective customers, ultimately financing partners and M&A partners that, that they are attractive. Um, and so the way you manage this process in selling me right from day zero is probably the single best data point I have on your ability to do all of those other things that will be far more important. So, you know, you need to be tight in your follow-up. You need to have done your homework. You need to, uh, manage a crisp process, not because I need to have my ass kissed and have a crisp process managed for my sake, but because it's the single best data point I'm going to get about your ability to do a whole bunch of other management things in your business. And I, I can't overstate that. It's critical. Okay, so Dane, um, I've gone off and, and we've done our diligence and we come back and say, you know, Dane, it's, we think what you're doing is really interesting. It fits with, it fits with some of the things we're thematically most interested in right now, the intersection of pheromones and dating is, is we've made five investments in that already. I know, they've been, um, I think we were a good fit in that lineup. <laughs> um, you know, you're a little raw and green and we're a little nervous about that and you're kind of heavy techie and I, yeah. you know, the business experience. So it's, a, I, I gotta tell you, Dan, I had a hard time getting this through my partners, um, but, I, but I went to the mat because I like you and I believe in this. And so here's what I can do. Um, so we're gonna, off, yeah. Just the fact that you've come back and you're offering, that means the world to us, right? Even if we can't get through all these terms, I think it's, it's amazing that we've actually found some commonality. I'm, I'm really thrilled that you're interested in what we're doing and hopefully the rest will figure out, but that's a big step to me. It means a lot. Right. Thank you. So I know you were interested in, a, in a, just a quarter million dollar seed investment. Uh, we don't think that's enough. Uh, it's got to be a million and a half. Uh, we oh. think that's what you need uh, <laughs> to build the business the right way. And so we'll do that at one and a half pre. Um, <laughs> and, that, and that million and a half. Um, but we don't think it's, you know, 
you can't use a million and a half all at once right away. And we think it's important to be disciplined about how the money gets spent. So we're going to break that into five $300,000 milestone driven tranches. Um, and we can get to exactly what those are going to be, but I have a starting straw man for how those would work. Oh, um, <laughs> and, uh, so that million and a half dollar round. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to do 400,000 of that. And so this term sheet will be contingent on, uh, you going out and rounding it out with another million one. Um, <laughs> And a couple of other contingencies. Uh, before closing, um, we think you're a brilliant scientist, and we love you. You're going to be the best CTO ever in the pheromone dating industry. But you, but you really need, we really need to find a CEO for this business, because now's the time to kind of elevate the quality of management here, and it's going to be the best thing for you. You know, you're going to have, you're going to have a little bit of a smaller piece, but it's going to be a much bigger pie at the end, Dan. Uh. Much bigger pie. Um, I'm a little nervous that uh, one of your co-founders th that you're dating, um, even and even if the pheromones line up, we don't. We just we've you've got, done your research. I we've been say. yeah, we've been burned by the kind of uh, sleeping together founders things before. It it rarely ends well. Uh, you know the Lazaros and Buddy Media aside, we won't go there. So she's got to be out. Um, and I know this is you know MIT is the roots of the business, but uh, the dating scene is really. It's, it's New York, and it's all about New York, so you need to move the business down here. Um, uh, then, you know, the government, so that's, that's a couple of the contingencies. And then, you know, the other important stuff is, is uh, governance. So we think a, a nine-person board at this point uh, where you'll have three seats and uh, the investors will have six. Um, and, you know, normal blocking rights. And then, of course, founder vesting. Um, so I know you own 100% of the company now, but actually a close, that's going to go to zero, and you'll vest back over uh, the standard four years. So that's the rough outline of what we're interested in. So uh, let's get to work. OK. Um, you well, want to sign? Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, you know, again, I, I'm very appreciative that you guys are making an offer. I think that you've, you've made this really hard for us to sort of find a place that might work. Um, we are lucky that a couple of other folks have sort of taken some interest in us. But beyond that, you know, everything I've asked in five pheromone projects we've done so far means that we're really invested in seeing if there's a way to get this to work. Um, so let's just go through that list. So uh, the actual vesting, I don't have an issue with. I think it's fine for us because we're not going anywhere. We're going to be in this business. I don't know about the four years. Um, the idea of uh, moving to New York from Boston, I think that's going to be really hard for certain folks. We might be able to put a satellite office down here or at least make some sort of travel schedule, but we can figure that out. I think the biggest one that we have to get over before anything else is this idea of a ratchet on a one and a half. Because if we do that, then you own the business, right? And there's a real issue with my scientists who are working for free, is they believe in a bigger vision. And if we just hand it over now, you're going to almost demoralize us for where we want to get to. And, and that's the which piece, which piece is this? You're concerned about? Well, I'm concerned about the fact that you've taken it from 250 to one and a half. Oh, okay. I think that's great, and I think that maybe you have an idea there in the tranches. But maybe what we do is we don't set a static valuation, right? We do a 250 now at a valuation that makes sense, maybe the million and a half, and then as we go through, the valuation slides as well. Because if we get the match deal, which is very close, or any of these other deals, we'll see a, a serious trajectory change, right? And it would be hard for me to soak all that up with a team without having any kind of you know change in that ratcheting. But I think we could do more money. But I think we, we couldn't do it at that structure because then I wouldn't have I wouldn't be able to get my people excited because there's just it's not enough there. Well, the the issue though there is we've got a you know as a firm we have a pretty hard target of 50% ownership of the businesses that we invest in, and so if we do that on a, any sort of scaling valuation, um, we fall off our targets, and that's what I've sold to my LPs, and you know we need to stay focused on our strategy, and so that's kind of the way it lines up for us. So. But I think that, so you're, you're, let me understand your targets better, right? So you have a requirement for your firm to get to a fully invested 50% ownership, right? Yeah. Like you want to walk away when we go public having a 50% cent, right. cent stake? I mean, that's, that's not what we see in the industry, but it's really exciting that, you know, you guys take that much interest in your company. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think there's an opportunity here that, you, you know. got to pay for the G5 somehow, Dan. I, I know. And I look forward to riding it when we get to the, uh, the IPO. Um, I think that. Maybe if it's, if it's truly a 50%, then obviously you have a lot of money to mobilize, right? It's, there's a lot of money out there these days. So 
I don't know if, if we give you rights that you can continuously invest in and get to that ownership, I don't think you have to necessarily have it day one, right? Can't we, can't we target through different rounds that we get there and, and do something small to start with? Yeah, we may, we may be able to work something out there. You're giving up way too easy on that. <laughs> I, well, yeah, there's, you have a lot of things in there to fight. So my girlfriend, for instance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there are, there are a lot of... There's another option. You could stop dating and promise to stay that way. How you found out that we're dating in the first place is, is impressive. It definitely means that you know the industry and can pull lots of strings. That you're the kind of guys we want to work with. Um, but you have to think from my perspective. So I've actually been able to get her to work for free because she's eating my ramen, right? And this is a cost savings for you guys. So if you continue to let me work that... You know, I'm, I'm emotional for sure, but the reason I got into this was I find matches through fair months, so I understand her perfectly. So I think, I think that, that you might want to look at it from a different economic perspective, not just a relationship perspective. Okay, well, what if, we, uh, what if we agreed that the board would always have the ability to just categorically fire her at any point? Well, you, you already have that in having a nine-person board with six seats. So I don't know if we need to explicitly put that in the contract that okay. she sees that says okay. she can get fired any time. And on that board thing, I don't think that, I mean, that's more than the company, right? So why would we have nine people on a board in that? three-person company, I think that <laughs> we probably want to uh, we probably want to find, maybe what we do is have a big observer group, right? So we can have a lot of people in the room who can be contributing. We actually create a smaller structure. And since the equity thing isn't going to be, you're not going to hear 50% right away, we can have board seats sort of key in with each of those rot, you know, tranches, and we'll have the seats to start with. Because you want us making these decisions, right? You want us sort of thrown in on this business, not just, you know, consumed by you, right? Because you take our motivation away. We'll just... We'll find some reason to sell it and start over again. But if we own enough, I guarantee you we're all in there all the way. Yeah, we can maybe live with that as long as we, uh, so I assume it sounds like you're okay on the CEO thing? Uh, no, I'm just going through the list. It's a long list. <laughs> um, so for the CEO thing, I, you know, I'm young, um, but I guarantee you we'll put more passion than anybody else. Uh, I think it would be really hard. So where would you incentivize that CEO from anyway? Like he would, starting at our size company, he would want a big hunk. If you're thinking of getting it from your, your ownership, I think that's an interesting way to get a mentorship role in place. Um, but if I have to take it out of my equity, then, then again, it compresses us to a point where it's just not worth it. Do you, think it's, do you think it's a good idea to get stronger leadership in the business? I think it's a good idea to get great people in the business, awesome people. And I'm not hung up on a title, um, but I think it's important to to at least give me the opportunity to grow in that space. So even if we were to give them that title, there has to be some sort of method for me to take that role over. For you to take that role over again? Well, I am now. Right. I have been now. Right. And if I sign this, I'm not. Uh, right. But I think if you if you saw me show the maturity and getting through these different bands, that that person might, because if we're attracting that person to a three-person startup, they're not going to be a great A CEO. They're going to be someone looking for an interesting project. Unless you No, we're going to give them half your equity. Oh. Um, well... Yeah, there's a certain point where, you know, even though you guys have those solutions, uh, I'll have to use my big founder gun and say, I don't, I don't think it can work if we get too pressed against that rope, right? Like, there's a point where we just want to continue doing more research. And, you know, I think that there's another valuable thing here is if this doesn't work out, the fact that you're interested is also creating a nice history for us. So if it doesn't work right now, maybe we can just keep an eye on each other and, you know, you'll have an opportunity to come back in. I know we'll need more money. Um, but if we can figure it out now, we're obviously inclined to do that. I just think we need to have the structure that at least the hope, which is important for our team psychology, isn't evaporated. Boy, you're you're hitting me hard on everything, Dan. Um, you know, and, and we, I don't necessarily want to do this all in this in this meeting. I'm just thrilled to get this. So I think it's I think at least I've laid out my reaction, my gut reaction, which I know is very visceral and strong, but there's a lot in there. Maybe we just take some time, and I'll go around to my team and try to sell, not my girlfriend, but everybody else on my team, <laughs> and sell them on this idea, and then we'll get back together, and, and you'll see what your partnership pressures are, and I'd love to meet the rest of your partnership and get the chance so they can see what I am as well, and we can get to see well, who's coming to bear and take some of those steps together. Great. Okay. Woo! <laughs> um, so we should, should we break down some of these? Actually, any... We throw it out for any like obvious well, crazy things that jump out or first off, you often unless you're dealing with a great VC like Brad actually is, you will get crap on the barrel head. Um, which you should just understand is their incentive and they're testing you how much latitude you have. So taking the conversation off and then just spearheading him with other stuff, like 
Uh, this other investor wants to be an angel. Would you let them in for part of it? Or I found this other guy who just keep on hammering them will, can change their influence through time. Like, you will never be able to move them all the way in one session. And frankly, to, I think the best thing that you can do <clears throat> when you receive that initial message is not react much at all. Just understand. Um, make sure that you walk out of any first conversation about a term sheet, um, whether it's oftentimes I'll say, hey, let's sit down. I want to give it to you in person on paper. We'll walk you through it. Just get clarity at that point um, and then leave and go away and talk to your advisors, your colleagues, your co-founders, your lawyer, whatever, um, and make sure you can come back and respond holistically rather than trying to right away start chiseling at this, that, and the other thing. Maybe with sending a signal, you know, Ouch. although it's risky, like if you think there's some things that are way out, way off base, but, but don't argue too much right away. And also don't carry the whole argument yourself. Like this is, a, this is definitely compressed, but usually the founder would hit two or three things they're really interested in, and then they depend on their lawyers, and they depend on their advisors, and they depend on other people to knock off some of the other stuff. You have to pick carefully where your battles are, because you need a relationship with this after it's over. Um, and another thing is, uh, and you'll see, you know, good negotiators on both sides of these things will try to drill the negotiation into specific points and, you know, win this point, finish that negotiation, then move on to that, the next one, finish that negotiation. And the reality is that these things are, a deal is a holistic set of components and there's a lot of trade-offs here and there. And, and, you know, when I'm negotiating something, I'll, I'll give on this if I get a little bit here. Um, so don't let me break it down into a point, 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 point sort of thing. Um, th there were a couple, you know, we, we made it deliberately sort of ridiculous, but um, there are things, you know, it's not actually at all uncommon for people to get concerned about things like a husband and wife team, which that's just one of those things that some investors are totally comfortable with it and some investors are totally uncomfortable with it. And it's a question of whether or not people have been burned by personal experience with that before. And um, if you find that you're in one of those situations, be it about that issue or anything else, you probably are never going to win trying to sell past kind of black and white, hard and fast rules. So you, you may be better off just moving on. Don't ever, at any stage, have a nine-person board until your IPO. <laughs> <laughs> Nor give up control of your board that early. Do we have time for questions? I think we do, yeah.